What's up, guys? You're welcome to Emakong TV, where we publish news on politics and entertainment. All right, guys, there's a serious message here that uh, Buari need to hear this message by this Biafran uh, queen. The, the message here is a timely one, considering what is happening now and with the uh, abduction of Namdi Kanu. This lady has a message. According to her, she said that this message can end Biafran agitation within 24 hours without a single bullet being touched. That's what she said. So, so guys, I want you to take your time. Watch this video to the end. You are going to learn a lot from what this girl, sorry, this Biafran queen is saying. She took her time and x-ray how the whole thing got started. She gave us deep secret about the Biafran struggle and the hidden things going on in this country why the biafran agitation first of all is still on how it got started in fact you need to just listen to her why people are agitating why we have oduduwa republic now biafra who knows tomorrow whether the middle belt are going to join the agitation and also the south uh, south especially considering the fact that recently both is security urobo and Isoko elders came out and, you know, declared for Biafra. So nobody knows what is going to happen. Listen to this girl. Take your time. Listen from the beginning to the end to what she has to say. Then you drop your comment. Let me know what you think. Thank you. Adibo, what do I have to say about Enam Dekano arrest? Point of correction, Enam Dekano was not arrested. He was adopted. The last time I checked, he was adopted. But this is what I have to say to the people that adopted Namdekano. If the reason why you adopted Namdekano is to break Biafra, if the reason as to why Namdekano was adopted is so that Biafra would die a natural death, so that people will not talk about Biafra, so that Biafrans will not be talking about Biafra agitation, then I have this to tell you. You are seriously chasing shadow. Why did I say you are chasing shadow? Biafra is a spirit and spirit doesn't die. We are seed. When you kill one, many more will germinate. There are many more people that are very passionate, enthusiastic and willing to continue the Biafra struggle no matter the level it will get to. And why all these agitations? Because there is a fundamental problem and you are not ready to discuss the problem. The government of the day is not ready to listen to the complaint of the people. There is a problem. You don't want to provide solution to the problem. You don't, you are not ready to discuss with the people. You are not ready to know why this thing is still happening after 50 years. The problem is there and the agitations will continue. This same problem was what led to the civil war. Do you know that that civil war could have been averted? Why was there a civil war? Because Ojuku was asking for a restructured Nigeria. Ojuku believed in restructuring Nigeria. That was why you heard about the Aburi Accord meeting in Ghana. Ojuku and Gowon were supposed to have a meeting where Nigeria would be restructured. Unfortunately, Gowon betrayed Ojuku and the restructure did not happen. That was why Ojuku went to the east and declared Biafra. That erupted, that brought about the civil war. Why? Because Ojuku believed so much in confederation. Because he had already preempted what is happening today. That was why from Abinisho he was calling for a restructured Nigeria. A confederation system of governments where every tribe will go to their region and develop their region. Go to your region and use the resources of your region and make your region sustainable and viable. A, a confederation is a system of governments where every region will govern protect their region, have state police, have state army, decide what happened to them, decide their fate, give jobs to their youth, provide electricity, make the roads accessible. That is the kind of government Ojuku was asking for. Why? Because he knew that this system is not going to favor any woman. Ojuku knew that this system, this Nigerian system, is not in favor of any woman. 90% of Ndiwu are capitalists, and the system, the constitution, the institution called Nigeria, 
does not protect a capitalist, does not encourage a capitalist. That is why you are seeing about all this agitation. Now, let me ask again, why are people agitating? People are agitating because there is no fairness, there is no justice, there is no equity, and there is no equality. If there is fairness, if there is equity and equality, I want somebody to tell me why a bandit, in a viral video that I watched, which I know many of you must have watched, a bandit was carrying AK-47, and in that video, he was speaking Hausa, saying in Hausa language that he has killed a lot of soldiers, that any soldier that come his way, he crushed all of them. And in that video, I saw government officials standing before him. Even police and army were cheering him up. If it was a Biafran, an Igbo man, that is carrying flag in his hand, they could have asked the police to go after that Igbo man and kill him. Because there is no fairness, there is no justice, and there is no equity. Meaning that the government of Nigeria is lopsided. There are some people that should kill and they will be pampered. While the other ones, once they carry flag, they will be killed. That is why people are agitating and the agitation will not stop. The agitation will go from generation to generation. It doesn't matter whether you kill many more people, imprison many more people. The truth is that at the end, the people will be free. Now, why are people agitating? Why are people passionate about living in Nigeria? Because of high marginalization. This is system called Nigeria is not favoring any woman. Igbo people have suffered in the name of one Nigeria. Whether you believe it or not, Ndi will have suffered because of this one Nigeria. Because of an institution, because of the system, it's not favoring Ndi Igbo. Serious marginalization. They can't do anything and involve an Igbo man. If they are holding a meeting, Ndi Igbo will be excluded from the meeting. If there's an appointment, Ndi Igbo will be excluded from the appointment. That was why that civil war happened. I won't go back to the civil war. Now, why are people agitating? Because of that 1999 constitution. That constitution is not in favor of that average man that is on the street. That constitution is not favoring that small girl that is going to school. That constitution is not favoring that our aged parents that are supposed to be receiving their gratuity. People are agitating because immunity is covering all the state governors, all the senators. Haven't you seen that a governor after eight years of his tenure, they will say that this governor did not pay workers' salary. This governor did not build roads. This governor has been looting his state. Instead of that governor to be prosecuted and imprisoned or jailed, this governor will go again and contest for senator, for senate seat, and he will win. Tomorrow they will tell you that DSS just arrested this governor. After three or four calls, the governor will be released, and that case will be swept under the carpet at the detriment of the people. That is why people are agitated. People are agitated because there is no standard hospital. There is no standard um, road. All the roads that they are building, all the roads they have been awarded, is amateur roads that they are building. And when people go to that same road, people will die. People are agitated because there is no plans on how the youth should be given job. That is why they are talking about empower. When you graduate as a youth, when you graduate after spending many years in school, they will tell you that the only job left for you is empower. Just sit down, they will give you 20,000. So I want you to tell me in a situation like this, why won't people agitate? When the common man doesn't have hope, people are agitating because when you, you don't give people food to eat, the economy is not sustainable again. People are hungry, they are committing suicide and dying. And now when they come out to protest, you will take police and army to wage a war against them. You will tell police and army to shoot anybody that is protesting. Meanwhile, the last time I checked, Nigeria is practicing democracy and not autocracy system of government. That is why people are agitating. Now, what kind of government do I want? What is the government of my dream? What is the country of my dream? The government of my dream is the government of fairness, equity, justice, and equality. The government of my dream is the government that is willing to build standard hospital, a government of checks and balances, a government that will jail and persecute any looter, a government that is not lopsided in their judgments, a government that is not lopsided when it comes to rule of law, a government of all, a government that is protecting the interest, the right of mother and child, a government that will not kill somebody that is carrying flag and protect and pamper a man that is carrying AK-47. A government that is willing to talk about the epileptic electricity of Nigeria 
for more than 50 years, 100 years, nothing like electricity, and nobody is willing to discuss it. I know Nigerian government, they are not willing to discuss this. That is the government of my dream. A government that is willing to accommodate everybody. A government that have listening ears. And unfortunately, Nigeria in its capacity as the giant of Africa cannot give me and millions of many more Nigerians that kind of government and that kind of, kind of country that I am admiring. So that is why I am using this opportunity to call on the lawmakers of Nigeria, the senators and the House of Representatives members, as a matter of urgency. I want you people to include referendum in the Constitution. There should be amendment of the Constitution. That Constitution is not favoring anybody. You have to amend the Constitution so that I will decide my fate as to whether I want to remain a Nigerian or not. It is my fundamental human right to decide whether I want to stay in Nigeria or not. I am calling on the NAS. I'm calling on the lawmakers of, in Nigeria. Amend the Constitution. Amend the Nigerian Constitution. 1999 Constitution is not favoring anybody. Include referendum in your Constitution. If there is no referendum, include the referendum. We have to start voting whether we want to remain in Nigeria or not. If not, agitations will not stop. I also want to use this medium to call on the United Nations, to call on Britain, to call on America, to please tell the government of Nigeria to grant their France a date for referendum. The people want to be free. The people want to go back to their roots. The people want to go back to their land. The people want, want to claim what belongs to them. And I know there is nothing wrong in protesting. But they kill protesters. They make us to be hungry. And when we come out to protest, they kill us, they jail us. Meanwhile, it is our fundamental human right, right of life, right to vote and be voted for, right of movement. But in Nigeria, you cannot move. You cannot speak against the Nigerian government. When you speak, DSS will come and arrest you. In most cases, they will kill you. I'm calling on the United Nations. Please, I am begging the UN and America. Nigerians are suffering. They are raping our mothers in the farm. They are killing our sisters. I know in America, the right of mother and child is of a very high priority. You don't joke with mothers and children. But in Nigeria, they joke with mothers and children. They rape our mothers and the rapers are not persecuted. The people that rape our mothers are not persecuted. That is why I am calling on you to come to Nigeria and tell the government of Nigeria to grant the people a date for referendum. We are suffering and we cannot continue suffering and smiling. Grant us a date for referendum. It is within our fundamental human right. And stop arresting peaceful protesters. Stop arresting us. You cannot beat a child and ask the child not to cry. You cannot kill us and ask us not to retaliate. We are not willing to retaliate. We are not willing to fight anybody. We are peaceful, loving people. We only want to go back to where we come from. We want to go to Biafra land. Give us the opportunity to develop our region. That is all we are asking for.